But number one, it all starts, you know, with you and what you tolerate. Like people will only do what you allow them to. People will only, you know, um, live up to what you allow them, what standards you allow to pass. So if somebody doesn't follow like, whatever rules you put in place and you say, you know, no big deal, you know, we'll fix it next time. Um, then the next time they're going to do it again or somebody else is going to do it again and they're not going to take you seriously. And then you try to implement new, you know, guidelines or standards or rules. You know, it's going to be hard to get everybody, you know, to, uh, to listen. Way back in the day, I used to work for Baltimore Gas and Electric. It's an electric company and they had a zero tolerance on being late. If you were late one minute for any reason whatsoever, you would immediately just grab yourself and go. There was no questions you know, asked. Nobody was ever late. Well, I don't care if there was an accident, if there was traffic, if anything, people would get there like 30, 40 minutes early, get coffee, sit around, talk, hang out, and then they'd get their route for the day and then they'd go out and read meters or whatever they had to do. But nobody you know, um, would be late because there was zero tolerance. They didn't care if you were the number one, you know, meter reader in the company. If you were late, you were gone too. So you kind of have to have that same mentality when it comes to uh, creating rules uh, for your business and then, you know, holding them accountable and actually following through. So for like me, I created a, uh, you know, a two strike policy because for me, everybody's human. They can mess up once. So if a trainer were to, you know, miss a session because they overslept, that's fine. They would get written up, so I'd let them know, you know, I'd do some retraining, so we'd sit down, I'd go over what happened, write it all up, have them sign and acknowledge that, yeah, their alarm was set for PM instead of AM or whatever, and that now the corrective thing is that they're gonna set their cell phone and their alarm clock for now on, and if it were to happen again, then they know what the consequences would be, which would they'd be terminated. And if they happen again, even if it's your best trainer, you have to follow through with it because everybody else knows that they missed that one time. And that one time isn't, you know, it wasn't two times a year, it's two times forever. So if they miss one time and it's been two years since they missed the second one and they missed the second one, then I'm still gonna let them go. And if everybody knows that and that happens one time and you lose your best trainer, guess what? None of your other trainers are ever gonna miss that session, you know, you know, early in the morning or whatever, you know, again. So here you have to, you know, starts with you. You gotta set the rule and then follow through even if it's hard. Two, it's all about your communication. My good friends and uh, business partners, Mark Hoverson has a level in our game, in one of his games, it's called executive communication. And that's really key because some, every, you know, even if you have systems running your business and you have ways you want things done, over time you're constantly finding little ways you know, to make it better. And if you don't document that and then retrain your employees in your head, you're like, you think you told everybody and everybody's you know, running the latest edition or latest update, but they're not. You might have told one trainer and you assume that everybody else knows it. And then when the other person's not doing the same thing, you get upset or, or you think they're not listening or whatever. So you have to communicate clearly. There can't, you can't leave anything up for assumption. So whenever you create the instructions for them to follow, it's gotta be crystal clear, step by step, that anybody can just open up the manual, look at the checklist, you know, and follow it. Even in, you know, for everything in your business. In my gym, even the cleaning people had a checklist because the first time they came in and they cleaned the gym, this showed me how good of a job they could do. They did a great job. They sold me on it, like, all right, you're hired. You can come in once a week and do like deep cleaning, clean everything. First week was great. Second week was good. By like the third week, I noticed that you know, the mirrors weren't done. And I was like, all right, you know, what's going on? You know, maybe they're just in a hurry this time. It's like a fluke accident or whatever. The next week it was like the mirrors and one other thing. And I was like, okay, now they're just trying to see, they're trying to hurry up because they probably got another job they had to go to or they picked up some more business. So then I talked to them and told them my concerns. The next week it was perfect again. So I was like, all right, here's what I'm gonna do. So I created a checklist of everything I wanted clean from the mirrors to sweeping and mopping bathroom floors, to vacuuming, to wiping down the equipment, to cleaning up, taking all the trash out, whatever it was, I had a checklist for every little thing. And then I, you know, I just asked them to initial that they did each line item. You know, you're paying them, so you make the rules. So if they say, you know, if it's too much to ask, like, hey, can you initial this as you do them? If they say no, then find somebody else that will. Um, and that way, if they, if they initial off that, yes, we clean the windows, and I come in, I see a big handprint, and they've just left like five minutes ago, then I know they didn't, and I can be like, hey, you signed that you did the mirrors and you didn't, you know, what's going on, and give them a two-strike policy, you know, as well, and find somebody else that will actually, you know, do it. So you have to have your communication, you know, clear. You can't leave anything up for assumptions. So be clear, concise, and no assumptions. 
And um, so constantly updating your, your systems manuals, retraining. So you have to constantly update and retrain. And you can't expect your employees, especially as they're paid hourly, to take the initiative and go above and beyond because they're not, you know, whenever you pay somebody hourly, as a human being, you know, the way for us to get the most valuable out of that hour is either to get paid more or to do less. If they do less during the hour, then they feel like, you know, then they're getting their, you know, their, their worth. So you have to keep, you know, so especially if they're hourly, you know, employees, you have to constantly be motivating them, giving them recognition, you know, make sure everything's updated and then retrain when, you know, when needed. And that's a, one of the things I see a lot of people, they hire somebody and they expect them to take the initiative to fill that role and to keep making it better. Well, they're not. So you have to see the holes and the gaps in each position, fill those gaps, and then train them on exactly what you want, update your manual, and then again, hold them accountable and follow through with the consequences if they don't, if they don't follow it. Write them up. You can do a three-strike policy if you want. I like to, you know, because again, everybody can mess up once, um, but the second time it's on them. Um, when you do have checklists and stuff, make sure they're not like signing everything off first and then going and doing the task because they're definitely going to forget one or, you know, or two of the things even though they signed off on it. And then when you go to talk to them, that's what they're going to tell you. Um, you know, when I used to work in, when I was in the military in the Air Force, I was a crew chief on the B-2 stealth bomber and we had a manual for everything. It was called a technical orders. So it was like a step-by-step -step process for simple things, even opening up the door and closing it to get in and out of the aircraft or changing a tire. If we were changing a tire on the aircraft, We'd have one person with the wrench in the toolbox and one person with the manual and they open it up. The first step is telling you exactly what tools and toolbox and tools to check out to use for that specific task. One person's reading it off, one person is doing that, that step and when that step's done, you're both signing off on that step. Next step, one person reads it off, one person executes the step, both people sign off on that step. And I mean, that's, a, that's an extreme, but we were working on a billion dollar plane that if we made a mistake or we missed a step, it would cost people's lives and cost a billion dollars if the plane were to go down. So you have to have everything very spe you know, specific and it has, to maintain, it has to be updated. You can't be running off an old model. Be clear and concise with your communication and you know, really invest in your employees, invest in your team to keep training them and making them better and then again, holding them accountable.